Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hi, I'm Kathy. Do you know what I feel is not talked about enough? Or maybe I just haven't looked into it enough? And that is uh, empty nesting. Something that I'm currently and have been going through. Um, I also have borderline personality disorder. So already I'm at like a crossways because borderlines don't like abandonment. <laughs> so when your kids are ready to leave, it's you kind of feel like you're being abandoned. I don't know, maybe being a borderline kind of hits you differently. Moms are usually getting their kids off to university or college. And I just want to keep my last daughter here at home with me safe from the world especially when I know the way the world is going it's really hard to want to hand the reins over to her I guess you could say Especially daughters, like, I don't know, sons sometimes can be a little bit different, too, because they're your sons, but I thought if I had a son, I think that I would probably want to keep him at home with me, too. Um, my doctor ruined the chances of me having more children. I had uh, placenta accretia and she didn't know so she just kind of ripped everything out of me and I hemorrhaged and yeah I almost died and then had to get um, like a full hysterectomy after that so I kind of went into postpartum back then but people didn't really understand those terms 17 years ago. 16, yeah, 17. And uh, placenta accretia wasn't even really fully understood back then either. It wasn't really understood until Kim K got it and had to get surrogates and stuff like that. It's, uh, I've always wondered if I could have, if I could have more children, would I have wanted more? Or did I, like, was my, that my limit? Did I, did the universe just know my limit? My oldest daughter is 22. All of our birthdays are coming up. We're all Scorpios. Our birthdays are all like 15 days apart. So within two weeks of each other, we're all having birthdays. Um, mine's on the 7th of November. <clears throat> My oldest daughter is on the 29th of October. I call her almost a devil because she was born the night before a devil's night. And my older, or sorry, my younger daughter will be 17 on November the 12th. Her birthday's five days from mine. My other daughter's nine days from mine. Separate ways. And it's... <clears throat> I think it's more my fears and my BPD that's giving me this voice in the back of my head, like, telling me that my younger daughter is going to just decide that she's better off without me and going to leave, probably move in with her older sister and, or with her dad. 
But let me tell you, she won't be leaving her kitchen plates to rot in her bedroom if she lived with her dad. He would not be having none of that, nor would he be cleaning her room like I do. So, I don't know. Kids just believe that they know everything at that age. 18, that's when I moved out. My younger daughter, or my older daughter, moved out at 17. And that, like, the things in life, if I could do without talking about ever again, there's a lot of them. Uh, she was with a very abusive guy who was older than her, very controlling, and uh, convinced her that he was better off with that, her in a place on their own, mainly because I wouldn't hand deliver their food to them in their bedroom. Like, who, what kind of person in their right mind would do that? Like, sorry, if your dad kicked you out and he's not going to hand deliver food to you, do you think that I'm going to do that? What is that teaching either of you? Not happening in my house. That's like that sorry, not sorry kind of thing. So they moved out and I was on social assistance at the time because that daughter had severe ADHD. Like it was, I had, I couldn't work. I, I couldn't, I couldn't work. Every job that I would get, she would get me fired just from stupid shit. My time needed to be with her raising her. It was nobody else's responsibility to raise her but me, and I was stuck doing it alone, on my own. No help, no support, no financial support from her dad, from their dad. So it was, it was a fucking struggle, man. But I, I'm tough Scorpio, like, I'm in, I'm in it for the long haul. And <clears throat> I had to raise her. It was hard, man. She left when she was 17. I had to sign my rights over to this controlling, abusive boyfriend that she had who made her, she wasn't allowed to show like any of her skin. So she had to wear like wool sweaters down to her sleeves, like in the summertime. Um, and during that time we lot, we had like a few really traumatic losses in our family, one to brain cancer and it was very fast and one to an overdose, as you can tell, these things are very hard to talk about. So I'm going to go back to talking about the empty nesting. Um, I've been a parent all of my adult life, pretty much, since I was 21. I had my first daughter when I was 21. So glad I have this uncanny ability to just push things down somewhere into the bottom of my heart and not think about it for a little while. I had my first daughter when I was 21, so I just, well, I had her and then I turned 21. Um, so my whole adult life, I've been a mom. I never got married. I was known as like this person's girlfriend for a couple of times but I've never been known as like me for just me in my adult life 
and my mom. So to feel like those, that's not needed of me as much anymore. It's very hard to give that over, especially like when you know that your kids are not mature enough to not need mom 97% of the time. If there's any younger girls watching this, trust in what your mom says, because I don't know how many times I've said in my adult life, oh my God, if I had just listened to my mom, she was so right about this or so right about that. And you can ask, probably any female that's over the age of like 25 after your after your brain is fully developed you kind of start to understand the concept of life and the way life runs and works and you get to see people for who they are and you come to reality Maybe the world doesn't revolve around you so much as what it was when you were younger. Especially not after you move out of your parents' house, that's for damn sure. It's uh, such a change in a, in a mom's life to go from every day, every hour, constantly... Mom, 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 to silence to my cat. My cat needs me. And when I said, mom, 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 he rolled over like that. Oh, baby. Thank you. You want me to pet you? Don't bite. It's nice to have something need you. Especially when you have BPD or you're an addict. You just, when you start to get, and as you can see, I'm like, wringing my hands the whole time when you start to get idle hands and your brain just starts going tick 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 it gets uh sometimes those thoughts aren't the thoughts that you want to be alone with they say that BPD is uh, protraction of or projection of trauma. And if that's the truth, then I've probably had borderline personality disorder. since I was six. I'm lucky that I don't have multiple personality disorder or DID. I swear sometimes I could, but that's, it's, I don't, that's another place I don't want to even process. Mental health is a fucking disaster. <laughs> that's a, uh, there's not really another way to describe it. Sometimes it's, you're very, very high. And sometimes you're very, very low. It's, but as you can see, my hair is two different colors. So I do not have a grip on my identity. 
So DID could very well possibly be. My adolescence was not fun. <laughs> No. I think that's why I was an addict. Because it's... I really do not want to... go there at all. Especially when your... trauma starts young. Those are not good thoughts to process. You try to just go forward and not think about the past, things felt and seen and heard, especially when you're young, oh man, it's, it's, uh, so you do your very, very best to be a parent, at least the good parents do. I know some parents, um, don't. I don't know what you can say on here and what you can't, so I don't want to risk having my video being private. Yeah, abuse and trauma is not fun, especially from young. Not at, not at any age. Like, it's not fun when you can, when you're not old, when you're old enough that you don't have the mechanisms to block it out. That's why selective amnesia is good and traumatic amnesia I guess there's opioid amnesia I don't know sometimes I feel like my brain is cooked so I really wouldn't blame my daughter if she wanted to leave but then I don't know if that's the borderline talking it's, I'm fucking yammering. I wanted to come on and make a video anyways and just say why I haven't really been very active. I made a video the other day where I was baking cookies. I baked a chocolate cake after that and like literally it's only been me that's ate the damn cake. Like half of the cake already. I don't think anybody's ate any of the cookies. I think that's why I gave up baking a little while ago. It was like, I felt like my services were being wasted. I'm just like scooping rotten garbage, rotten food into the garbage. Like, I felt like mother, like, it's not a good feeling. The processes of empty nesting. When your children start to pull away and not need you anymore. What do you do with yourself? Think with your own thoughts like that will seriously drive you crazy. I wish I was addicted to cleaning. But that seems like that like that seems like such a chore. I used to love cleaning all the time. <laughs> but when you are abusing substances, you kind of don't care. <clears throat> you like moving all around, you know, you know, like, kind of goes with the addiction. And when you have company coming over, they say you get the most housework done 10 minutes before somebody comes over to visit. Nobody's coming to visit. So, like, who am I cleaning for? Oh, it sucks being depressed. It's, life sucks sometimes. Oh, my fucking God. I feel so boring since I quit drinking and using. I could be, you could go out like a party and make friends and be social and 
and you're like in a corner with a needle and you're the most boring person on earth after that. You get weird and secretive and antisocial and now I'm clean and just don't know how to, I don't know where to put myself. Life is very strange. I'm going to go. I think I share too much information. Like, comment, subscribe, and come find me on my socials. It's Instagram, it's katiecat077, and on Twitter, it's just rash number one, because there can only be one of me. Love you guys, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!